Bitcoin is looking really bad today um, after the drop that we had yesterday. It's not all doom and gloom, like altcoins have uh, stayed strong. We are at some good support, but the bullish uh, plan, the bullish idea that we had of holding the impulsive structure that we had to the upside has very, very clearly been invalidated at this stage. So where are we right now? Um, on the good news, okay, the good side of things is that we are still trading within this range and that can continue. And as long as we're holding the lows, then there is the possibility of pulling in another higher low here and getting that continuation higher. Remember, we haven't actually come and taken the highs from the top of this range. And if we look at this as a range as a whole, then essentially we are holding still within this after getting that deviation at the bottom. And even if you draw this back here to this initial low when we like essentially came into it, you swipe lows, come up towards the highs, there's your deviation, support, support, support. This still here is acting as support. So this 60K even zone is really important support for now and uh, holding at this stage, this higher low. Now the invalidation that we had yesterday, and this had been my main plan essentially, was that we had created an impulse, a very clear impulse off of this low, okay? And then we were getting a corrective move back down. And for all of this, it was pretty much corrective, but what it was unable to do throughout the entire downtrend that we've had is get a single flip of resistance back into support so every time you lost a level we would just back test it and drop again back test it drop again back test it drop again and there was just zero sign of strength throughout this whole move and i think what really triggered the the capitulation here was that sunday close now there was the opportunity for this to hold and um the the move that we had down on friday with that recovery, this could have just played out being that like slower kind of chop that we have breaking out of this trend, getting a move up. I still considered this to be a range and, and was looking for these like low 62 to 64K area anyway. But as soon as we had that close on Sunday, it basically it, it almost invalidated any of this bullish idea at that point anyway. You close below that Friday low, it was a sign of weakness you open essentially having cleared this whole gap here like okay you, you tapped into the bottom of it but what you don't want to do this is the same with any impulse you don't want to see these deep retraces because as soon as you see these deep retraces they simply don't work so once we'd gone beyond that 50 percent if i put the 50 percent on here and once we'd had that real acceptance back below the 50 percent mark of the of this entire like impulse up higher Okay, you can say that Friday was was clinging on at that stage and Saturday was clinging on. As soon as you had that confirmation below, we get that drop to essentially take out the lows, which is which has now invalidated this. So we've had these two impulses and both of those now for long positions taken off of these are no longer valid. So that's the first thing. Um, there is, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying it's it's all over yet and we're going to be, dropping lower uh basically everything changes very very quickly within this whole market and i think it was like that we had that big tuesday capitulation with a lot of altcoins and i think that was really a sign that that things were incredibly starting to get very bearish uh with the chart overall none of these little pumps that we were able to have back a couple of weeks ago through fomc uh cpi for example, we're able to sustain and to hold and kept making lower lows. And I started to flip very, very bearish at that point. Um, you obviously see here, you lose the point of control. You back test it as resistance lower down. You're back testing levels consistently as resistance the whole way down here. And when you look at the four hour chart, it is just very, very clear the downtrend we've been in. And it did reach a, a pretty decent peak yesterday with some high volume. So these slow grinds down just being very difficult to trade because what they do is get people trapped into those long positions, um, unable to get even a take profit off of these a lot of the time because they don't take highs. And we're seeing another situation today where if you're long 
you may not even have hit take profit yet because the take profit level is a little bit above where we've already been this morning. And uh, yeah, just continuing this this big, big move down. So going back over onto the support that we have here, uh, anchored VWAP from the year. So this is your yearly VWAP acting as support. It acted as support once. We are testing it for a second time. It's not ideal. Like when you're testing these levels, usually you go, okay, you hit it once and then you go. And then to be hitting this anchor view app twice in such a short period of time, I'm not saying that that's particularly strong. But in the same time, we have tested this 72K high four times already. So both support getting weaker with each test, resistance getting weaker with each test. And I think still we are looking at that overall idea that we have this long, slow summer which I keep repeating, where we just start to coil up and hold within this range until an eventual break later in the year. So something along these lines is probably the idea that I'm mainly looking at now uh, for the the macro. So just continue with this range, um, not feeling incredibly bearish. We still are able to look for longs because we are at range lows. The invalidation for that will be losing this 56,500. Yep. So if you're looking for longs, your invalidation is here. If looking for longs more locally, uh, there is an opportunity, I'd say, as long as you're holding daily open. And this monthly level is quite a nice level as that held once. We've obviously come down and swept these internal lows and now are holding above that monthly level. That's a, a good area in which to look for longs with the previous day low as your invalidation. So there's a couple of possibilities here, but I'm not really the, the risk to reward on a trade here, um, unless you're looking for a move back up into the POC, which is certainly possible. But I think at this stage, we'd have to be happy even if we get that move back towards 64. Um, so you've got a trade here, but I'd say for holding longs right now, it's, it's not the best risk to reward because of how deep we went yesterday. And also, if it does start to come down below that that daily open again here, okay, it may it may increase the reward that you're possibly going to get out of the risk, but it does lower the probability. I'd say we really do need to be holding this daily open at this stage and, and holding this monthly if we are going to see this this continued recovery and a bit more of a V-shape because until we see this, okay, we're nowhere near um, we're nowhere near bullish again. Uh, until we see some significant strength. So once again, it is another bounce, but every time we've had one of these bounces, they have been retraced and we have to be aware of that until we start to change market structure, which is a long, long, long way away. Now, if we go back over here, um, some other things that are, I guess, fairly positive overall. This is the first time we've entered into oversold on the RSI for over well almost a year so it was august uh, 2023 it was the last time that bitcoin was oversold on the daily rsi so if we look at how low we've gone we had that read yesterday around about 25 there's been very few occasions where we've been down this low and on every single occasion where we have gone this low right it has resulted in a recovery um, so we can mark these off and we can look at, so there was November, 2022. Okay. Uh, it's my, there, there we go. November, 2022 lows. I mean, they got like a little SFP on some exchanges afterwards, but overall had a decent recovery. You go back to June, 2022 oversold over here and you had a really decent recovery. So this was obviously the, the, the low, low, the FTX low. <laughs> Low over here, right, bounce, you never went back to it. Low over here, you swept it a couple of weeks later, but ultimately big recovery. And this is the first time that we've been seeing that for, yeah, for, for almost a year. The other thing that we have here is the divergence against, uh, let's just increase, oh, what am I doing? There we go, there we go. Um, 
we have the higher low with price and the lower low on the RSI, which is starting to create those bullish divergences. But again, it's not really something that you can use to take trade ideas off of. Um, but with the with the divergence there confirmed, okay, you can now look for longs with the invalidation of basically you cannot get a daily close below 60,260. If you're looking for longs and you're playing the divergence, as long as you are getting daily closes above this level, this daily level right here, then you're fine. As soon as you close below it, that idea is invalidated and you look for lower levels. So information there um, in order to, to take some trades with these hidden divergences. Uh, this, I don't like the word hidden divergence because they're not hidden, it's plainly obvious and it's still a divergence, it's just the opposite of what you usually see. I actually often prefer these, right? Because the thing is, when you have a divergence on the, let's say the RSI, for example, and the RSI is making these, these higher lows, where maybe we have an example of it, or you've got an example of it from these highs here, yeah. You don't really know how, you don't really have an invalidation for a trade based off of that. But if you are getting these divergences where there's the flip side of that, where you have the, the low here, the higher low here, then you have a price invalidation, okay? So the RSI can remain down here, but you have a price invalidation, you knowing that a daily close below that level would invalidate this idea and you would have to get out of that trade. So it's pretty decent. Um, RSI is uh, one of those that if you can trade it correctly and just be sensible with it, it does give some really nice information. Now, we also went like <laughs> really, really, really mad here on the uh, the four hour RSI, but I'm not gonna do anything more than that. Um, on the weekly, right, we have this trend line that has been around since, once again, we're, we're looking back at these, these same levels, since that June, 2022, uh, that continued through the FTX crash in November 2022, that continued through the big like corrective period that we had last summer, similar to what we're seeing now, and is continuing uh, right now as well. So if we're looking at the trend line from here, you can see that, okay, currently we're trading beneath. So if we draw this either from this low, this low, okay, you get the idea. RSI trend line where we've started our week is literally right on this so you can see the slight change of angle here um, so if we close this week green then this trend line remains intact if we don't close this week green then it's likely that we've lost this and you start to look at okay if there were any trades based off of that idea with uh, the the higher time frame the weekly time frame there then that would start to invalidate any bullish ideas on the weekly um, and then you've got to start looking a little bit lower once again. So if bullish ideas are started to get invalidated on the weekly, what I would say from that is you don't really want to see, I mean, it's okay here. All right, we've had three down weeks. We could be putting in a wick here. But if we do get closes, once again, uh, below that 60K level on the weekly, then I do think that that sets us up for a move down to 52 uh, which is the next area of major volume that we have on the chart. I believe also if we look at our moving averages, we should have the 50 week. There we go. So we do have that 50 week EMA coming in, um, which has acted as bull market support previously. Okay, on uh, quite a few occasions. So an important level to hold if there is to be further weakness here, we would be looking at 52 as the next level. And then I've seen a few things in the chat asking about 40K. Is that on the cards? You'd have to say you would very, very likely see a bounce at 52. But then you'd have to be looking at, okay, this range is lost. You'd be looking at a bounce back into 60, confirming as resistance again. And that could then lead you down to that 42K afterwards. And essentially at that stage, we're basically repeating what happened on previous cycles. So I find it very, very unlikely, first of all, 
that we're going to repeat the same highs and the same lows because essentially we did make the same highs, all right? It was 69K previously. It was 72. Yeah, I know we wicked to 74, but realistically, okay, 72K is the where we've accepted, like accept, uh, accepting that that is a, a top right now and has been butting into that as resistance for quite some time. So if we're going to do this same thing of just 69, 70, 70K to 42K again, it just seems improbable, but not not impossible, I guess. Uh, we'll go back down here. I'm kind of like flipping all over the place. I should have started with the weekly and then gone down to the daily and uh, done all of that. But hey um that's that's what happens when i record a video in the middle of a stream i just uh i just roll it off so whatever um is there anything else on the daily that we need to discuss there's not is there there's not anything else in the daily um 200 ema is just below price here and if you're looking at the 200 ema on perps we've already hit it uh, so if we go over, I believe on, uh, make this the 200 over here, then on some perps, we've, we've already tapped into that, that 200, um, EMA on that is on that daily level. So another possibility here, we do have a harmonic that could start to play out. So we are looking at this what would be a bearish butterfly okay because the the d is the the final leg and then you'd be looking for a 50 percent retrace of this leg afterwards so you have a bearish butterfly playing out but that does mean that it's bullish <laughs> for the time being at least until we get to like 84k um right now so <laughs> essentially what we'd be looking at here is we had the x to a um we had a, an 886 uh retrace we're in that like 786 to 886 um, uh, retrace here that has tapped into this daily level. And then we will be looking for an extension to the 1.618 that takes us to around about 84K. So if we do reverse from here and if we do start to change this market structure and we're looking at a, a decent move up, um, I think that it's going to take a, a quite a long time. I, I don't really like, yes, this could be the low, but we may end up like extending this a long way up until like later in the year before we we get to that stage. But it's there as an idea. Okay, it is valid. 84 to 86K will be the target for this. And then what you would be looking at further down the line is then uh, to retrace this, which would actually be like really, really perfect if this was to happen. Let's say we go to 84, 85, 86. Okay, you would be then looking for the 50% retrace, which would take you in to do a bullish backtest of the range that we've currently put in, which is very, very similar to what happened in the last bull market, right? We go back to, to 2021, where we had this long drawn out range that happened after the halving. Okay, you created this same kind of harmonic thing within this range. You got the extension towards that 1.618 you then came back in to test it wiping out a lot of leverage and greed once again and then you go for this run afterwards so i'm still looking at this as being a possibility where we can hold within this range as long as these lows are holding then this is still valid all right we do have these ideas that are still valid to take us towards higher prices then we get that back test and then we go again a little bit later on in the year uh I should do some stuff on the lower time frames. Um, what we have to say on this, this is a chart that I was sharing with the crew yesterday. So as we were getting this move down, um, well, once we got into kind of the end of the day here and we'd seen this move and, and price was, was just starting to recover these lows yesterday evening, we could see that there have been a series of these gaps, a series of impulses on the way down. So similar, right? to what we'd seen with these two impulses up here. Now, as long as these were holding, then that leads you to be looking for, for higher prices, but you play it level to level. So once we lost, once we lost this impulse higher, right? Which you could say essentially happened on that 
Tuesday the 11th, the big like alt capitulation day. Um, we then were looking for the next level down, which was down here. Okay, and when we, we essentially invalidated that on Sunday. And then you look for the next level down again, which is coming back into this area here. We've been doing that on, on the lower time frames as well, where we've created this impulse range, impulse down, range, impulse down, range, impulse down, range, impulse down. And we were just continuing that and continuing that and continuing that yesterday. <clears throat> now, as soon as that flipped, okay, you can the first time that we flipped any of these gaps into some support, you started to come through and clear up some of the ones that we had above. Now, we tapped into what we can consider as the main resistance right now. So if we just remove all of this stuff from the chart, remove all these little internal levels, essentially we're left with something that looks like this, where you have support that has been, well, impulse down, which got flipped. So it was acting as support, you lose it, you immediately reverse, you're looking for the liquidity above. Now we haven't taken the liquidity up here, but we have come back into where this gap was. And that is why quite clearly we are seeing uh, a, a bit of a rejection from this so far this morning. Now what you want to be seeing is the this structure that we formed on this move up. So ideally what we want to be seeing is this kind of area here holding and starting to get a move back up here which can take out this 61,750 um, and then possibly we get a more corrective move of that and we we continue on from, from there. Uh, but when you look at things, I think the lower time frames are just a little, a little bit uh, sketchy at this stage. The high time frame levels are working well. So of course we have, whoops, um, the daily level that marked this impulse up, okay, which price has come back into test this morning and has so far rejected. We have the monthly level that was acting as support throughout May that we lost briefly okay got that close below but have reclaimed and are currently just just right on that level right now so if we can see these high time frame levels uh working really really well here where you had the move up into that daily level which had been a, the, the start of the previous impulse higher so is that now resistance you'd have to say yes so far it is but we are holding this this monthly so Essentially, um, we are kind of looking at a range between these levels here. If you can get back above this this daily level, then you have some a bit of clear space above. Now this could just end up in a sweep of liquidity and then reject again, all right? Or you could start to to run on that liquidity. So whether you're just looking at that being like a sweep of liquidity here, or if you start to then run on that liquidity then we can be looking at a recovery that takes us up towards that 62,750 area afterwards. Uh, so some trades to be had. Um, often after these really like really aggressive moves, you have just a very nice trading environment, a very calm trading environment. And we have actually seen that so far today. So from the lower time frames, okay, this is stuff again that we, that we talk about and we teach within the crew all the time. You had on daily open a little bit of a spike below just to take out a, a, some some just some slight liquidity, right? Okay, you, you just have that swipe below on the open. Yeah, you then reclaim it, you're back testing that, and then you have this VWAP offering it as support until you reach a, a nice climax in price there. And you can see now we're just trading around that VWAP uh, once again. And this probably soon will turn into the daily point of control and then you can start to look from there so yeah looking at this little range forming locally here uh for btc oh, there's quite a lot to talk about today um <laughs> if we draw the tpo and we have a look at this in fact you know what i'm gonna do I'm just going to TPO this up right now. There we go. So, yeah. Right. What we had down here was an NPOC, right? That I was not expecting price to come back for. <laughs> I will be perfectly honest, but we did have 
a naked point of control down here at 59, 365. Yep, that was the only one that was on this chart from lower. If you look at, obviously we had the move through through this one at a 61, 962K essentially, but this 59, 365, 50, 59, 350 NPOC has now been hit, which has cleared up everything within the range. There is no longer any imbalance here, right? You have a low that I wouldn't consider it the best low in the world. It could still get taken out, right? Um, you had poor lows as well on this daily. So if I can draw that from here, these were poor lows. And we just extend this across and make that like liquidity. That's the way I like to draw it. So poor lows at 58,800. I'm going to make that 800 because it will mess with my OCD. Because it basically is there, right? It's give or take a dollar or two. Um, MPOC here being as 59,365. And then everything else is pretty pretty chill throughout this. You had these single prints, right? 60,400. But of course, that's above where we went. So that was cleaned up yesterday as well. Um, so then we look over to this on the TPO. And what happened? You cleaned up the MPOC, cleaned up the poor low, put in a decent low on the day here, right? And this was also, interestingly enough, uh, the only naked value area low even on the chart. Was it? No, why is this here? Oh, that's the open. That's the open. <laughs> My bad. Okay, so you have you have everything. You had the daily level cleaned up. You have the Paulos cleaned up. You had the MPOC cleaned up. Now we can start maybe looking at what's above. Okay, price so far. Point of control from yesterday, sorted. NPOC here, 64,300. And uh, again, because the move down was so calm for such a long time and we kept getting these bounces, the only one that we really have above, the only area of, of major imbalance that we really have above is all the way up here at 71,200. Now, the other thing that there are, are poor highs over the weekend. So I don't like this when it's on this. Hopefully this will load because it's just too big a TPO. There are these poor highs from the weekend. So if we're looking at imbalance that is above price right now, you're looking all the way up to 71,200. First of all, for the first like volume imbalance, uh, NPOC big volume area that we've really got that hasn't been um, back tested already. But then you have very, very clear two days in a row, poor highs from the weekend. Um, uh, yeah, this <laughs> is then it is, it really is taking you all the way up to 71, 200 after that. So that has, I guess, essentially explained just about everything within this whole range. When you put this together as two composites, okay, you've got this lower range, this upper range. Of course, for a while we were holding this upper range, everything was looking okay. But as soon as you start to accumulate time outside of value, which is what we very, very obviously had, then you have to start to flip bearish. We had the move that uh, basically tested the, the range POC, that lower range POC, moving all the way down through that value area low and now holding that value area low. Whew, we're still going. We've spent half an hour. <laughs> um, I would now like to just quickly look at the... Uh, yeah, let's have a quick look on the rest of the, the web stuff that I have because I really don't think there's anything more to say from a price action perspective uh, looking at these charts. So looking at the order flow in general, yesterday ETFs... Um, outflows obviously but it wasn't that that extreme okay so there's not like we're not seeing massive aggression massive like exit from from the etfs here it wasn't too bad to be honest uh we're likely that we see maybe a bit more outflows again today because in fact the the actual price of bitcoin 
dropped to such an extent with it being such a capitulation that there ended up being a bit of a premium on the ETFs. Um, so some arbitrage opportunities there. If you sell uh, the ETF by spot, you're making a bit of money. Um, so we may see a bit of uh, a bit more outflows today if that that premium between the ETF and the the net, net asset value remains. So when we've had this previously on these big drops, these big like ETF dump days, it's created a an arbitrage opportunity for people to buy the ETF and then sell the spot by the ETF. And this time is the opposite way around. Uh, CVD, we're really not going to be looking at anything too interesting here. Um, clearly, yesterday was a mass, mass, mass capitulation uh, for Bitcoin. Okay, it, it was pretty pretty crazy probably the the most bearish day we've had in a year or so um we see that continuing in today and i think this will probably we'll look at the open interest in just a second this is nice we are getting that bounce off for the monthly um but i think we'll see this with the open interest having i would imagine not dropped too much but just probably just gradually floating down slightly uh, right now but we see spot has been holding up again uh perp's still b bullish cvd but it's just been the case throughout this whole move that we just get bullish cvd with every low um and it just ends up leading eventually so there's not really too much we can't really draw any conclusions into that uh, however we are seeing that spot is is leading a little bit of this move suggesting that at the very least the selling aggression from the spot markets that we saw yesterday um has started to slow down and uh a, a lot of this like bullish cvd that is starting here is mainly just a case of um people selling positions that are underwater at this stage like because okay we've had a bounce i just want to get out because i'm so underwater <laughs> uh then we have a look over here yeah we look at the open interest and it is kind of like we said obviously big liquidations yesterday so the highest liquidations that we'd seen since the last range lows and then before that okay these were those big like that's when we went from a trend a very clear uptrend and then we had those mass liquidations afterwards since that point Okay, open interest is is cooling, which is good. It hasn't like dumped completely, but it's cooling. Um, and I think this just goes to the fact that throughout a lot of this move, um, people have just been getting chopped up on these small moves. And it just means that a, a lot of this is not so much, there's not really opportunities. Like you take a short, get stopped, take a long, get stopped. There's like both sides are, are getting kind of consistently wrecked throughout this whole range, which has left it to, to not being a whole lot going on. Um, if you compare the net longs and net shorts, yes, okay, there's been a big increase in net shorts, but I don't really look into this. I'm not considering this to be trap traders. Okay, we are in a, uh, the time we're in right now, within the market is basically you and I are the only people crazy enough now to still be trading this, right? Um, if you've been trading memes, you're wrecked. You've probably lost all your money and you're not in the market anymore. Uh, if you're trading altcoins, you're wrecked. You probably lost your money and you're not in the market anymore. If you're trading Bitcoin from a day trading perspective, it's been slim pickings for opportunities and it's been quite hard to to get into trades with any like real conviction. So for myself at the very least, and for probably a lot of people watching, not from like getting wrecked and being out of the market, because that hasn't been the case. We're still just trading a range, but more just being bored of this price action. Um, it's just, just boring. Uh, so for, in my case, I've just been bored. Um, and what we have seen is that we've seen because of that open interest remains relatively consistent because all the volume is just exchanges and that's what we're seeing like the, this increase in net shorts that we get down at the bottom of the range is just because the exchange was selling and selling and selling at market like to, to basically create these moves um, and to just grab liquidity and to take out some of these higher time frame traders in order to get them out of the market before potentially a reversal um, back to the upside or right 
it's we're looking at this as being a real major shift here where um it just goes completely back into the control of the market makers and we're not going to see retail for um yeah for quite a long time right um so i think that's 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 kind of what we're looking for um right now is we we've seen this as being just a move that's just taken a lot of retail out of the market um some other charts we still have that spot premium but like i've said every time that we've had this that can carry on for a long time it does eventually lead to higher prices <laughs> and it has done previously but we have seen previously that like you started a spot premium back here um and you dropped another like 15 percent or something and it's a similar situation you started a spot premium back here and we've dropped another 15 10 15 percent or something um so not too much to be said about that anything else a lot of green okay altcoins have been doing quite well um uh, i'm not going to cover on these charts uh there was some some other stuff that i could have could have started talking about but yeah i think i'll wrap it up there and um i'll go back over here is there anything final that we need to discuss let's just have one quick look at where we are so yeah, we're still just caught within this range. And um, I think for myself, if there is to be a move up towards 62, I would start to target short positions once again there. Um, if we lose daily open, I would I would probably even short that to take out these lows. So it, that's, that's how critical that is. If we see weakness that comes down here, at that stage, I look to get more aggressive on shorts and we, and it's looking really really nasty so you don't want to see a situation where where we come back down to that daily open again let's see if this can float up maybe catch a short from here maybe take it back down again around here or if there is to be a long uh, there's not much opportunity to long right now <laughs> that's what i can say uh monthly level if we were there still uh, with an invalidation, if you lose daily open, would make sense. Um, but we still wait for a sign of strength. We've not seen that. So it can still just be short tips. All right. Um, then if we see a sign of strength, then we get we have more confidence in those longs. But we're quite a long way off of that right now. So this being bare minimum for a bounce again like every time we've had a bounce it's been like bare minimum and you retrace it and it's all the way back down again so almost uh 40 minutes of bitcoin update but i am gonna say goodbye there uh, i think i've covered enough and i'm gonna continue on with the stream so if you are watching this as a video i do live stream every single morning and we're gonna go over a ton more stuff in a minute and we're gonna take questions and everything so do get involved with that um, if you are interested in learning more about any of the stuff that I've been talking about, go and check out torrescripto.com where you can join our trading community. Do check out the links in the description below if you would like to support the channel. And um, yeah, I will leave it at that. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.